To keep yourself updated, subscribe to Indigo Learn and click the bell icon and download our app OneFin to start learning on the go. Friends, let's learn about something called as efficiency rating procedures. See, for various purposes, an organization will require to rate its employees. So, an organization will be interested in knowing who is a you know good performing employee, who is not that great an employee, who is an efficient employee, who is an inefficient employee. So, many a times in organizations, we come across this term efficiency of employees and the organizations use these efficiency ratios in order to you know determine whether the employee should be promoted or not, whether an increment should be given to him in terms of his salaries or not. So this employee efficiency rating becomes a very important concept when it comes to rating appraisals and other aspects of the HR policy of any company. Now let's understand what this employee efficiency is but for understanding this let's take a small example. Let's say there is a Maruti Alto car and then on the other hand we have a BMW 3 series. Now this Maruti Alto gives us a mileage of 15 kilometers per liter whereas this BMW 3 series gives us a mileage of 5 kilometers per liter. Now if I ask you this question friends is Maruti Alto a better car or is you know BMW 3 series a better car what would be your answer? Sir, how can we compare a Maruti with a BMW? These are two completely different products. One is an economy segment car, the other is a luxury segment car. One is a, you know, economic car, the other is a luxury car. One has a lesser engine capacity, the other has a greater engine capacity. One has lesser interiors, the other has greater interiors. The comfort here is less, the comfort here is more. So, how can we compare an apple with an orange? So, the idea here is when we talk about comparison or when we talk about rating the employees, when we talk about efficiency, we should compare the employees who are in the same category, who are you know doing the same kind of work, who are working on the same kind of products. So it is not possible for us to compare a Maruti Alto with a BMW 3 series. We cannot say that Maruti Alto is efficient or inefficient when compared to a BMW 3 series because both are different products, both of them have different product specifications, both of them have different qualities, features, performance capacities. But sir, if I compare two BMW 3 series wherein one car gives a mileage of 5 and the other car gives a mileage of 6, then at least can we do a like comparison, a similar comparison. If there are two cars of the same model, wherein one is giving 5 kilometers per liter and the other is giving 6 kilometers per liter, which of these two cars is a better car? Which of these two cars is more efficient? Which of these two cars has a greater fuel efficiency? Obviously, when I compare these two, the one which is giving the higher mileage is going to be considered as a car with a greater fuel efficiency. So, the second car, we can say it is a more fuel efficient car. Alright, but friends, let's say if I tell you there is only one BMW, there is only one car that we are having and for this car we want to understand whether this car is efficient or inefficient, whether the fuel efficiency of this car is good or bad, whether the fuel efficiency of this car is as per the standard or not. So, if I tell you that this car is giving us a mileage of 5 kilometers per liter on a standalone basis, if we want to evaluate whether it is efficient or inefficient, how can we do that? Sir, this car is giving 5 kilometers per liter. We need to first understand what is the benchmark? What is the expectation? What is the standard? Are we expecting this car to give 5 kilometers only or are we expecting that this car if you know performing efficiently, if performing under normal circumstances, how much is this going to give? If we say that as per the standard, under normal circumstances, this car was supposed to give 4 kilometers per liter, but it is giving us 5 kilometers per liter as mileage, then can we say it is efficient or inefficient? Sir, it was expected to give 4 but it is giving 5, so the performance is better than what we were expecting, the performance is better than the standard, that means it is a 
fuel efficient car we will say the efficiency of this particular car is better than the standard it is exceeding our expectations but on the other hand if the standard is 4 and we are getting a mileage of only 3 then are we meeting the standards are we efficient the answer to that question is no so we will say since the performance is less than the standard we are inefficient this car does not meet the fuel efficiency criteria so what did we do here we said look we cannot compare a Maruti with a BMW, there has to be something similar, something heterogeneous, something which is like, similar and comparable. So, once we have comparable items and then we compare each other, we will be able to understand which one is more efficient. But then, again if there was only one item and if we want to know whether that particular item, that particular product or as a matter of fact that particular employee is efficient or inefficient we need something called as the standard so if the performance is better than the standard we are efficient if the performance is less than the standard we are inefficient as simple as that so when we talk about the employee rating procedures and more specifically when we talk about the efficiency of employees what we are going to do we are going to compute what is the standard time that an employee should take in order to carry out a particular task. So let's say if we calculate, if we compute and if we set a standard that a particular task has to be completed in 10 hours. Now if the employee is taking more than 10 hours, let's say he is taking 12 hours. So is the employee efficient or inefficient? Sir, he was supposed to take 10, he has taken 12, so clearly he is taking more than what is uh, you know expected, he is an inefficient employee. On the other hand, if someone completed this task in let us say only 8 hours instead of the 10, then he becomes the you know efficient employee. So that is how we identify whether the employee is efficient or inefficient. If someone is taking less than the standard time, then that person is efficient. If someone is taking more than the standard time to complete a particular activity, they are inefficient. But here we are talking about calculating the efficiency percentages. So how are we going to calculate the efficiency percentages? We are going to take the standard time divided by the actual time taken and multiply it with 100 in order to understand what is the efficiency percentage. So if someone has taken 12 hours against 10 hours of standard time then the efficiency will be 10 hours which is the standard time divided by 12 hours which is the time taken into 100 we get 83.33 percentage that means the efficiency of this particular employee is only 83.33 percentage any efficiency percentage less than 100 means they are not up to the standard on the other hand if someone has completed the task in 8 hours, then how do we compute the efficiency percentage? We will say, okay, we were supposed to take 10 hours standard, but we have completed this activity in 8 hours. So 10 hours divided by 8 hours into 100, we get the efficiency percentage as 125 percentage. Alright, so this is how we identify who is efficient, who is inefficient and we calculate their efficiency percentage. Now, you know, how do we compute this? Let's summarize. Basically, we will have to do three things. One, we will have to determine what is the standard. So, only when we know what is the standard time allowed, only when we know what is the time that, you know, as per standard we are going to take to carry out an activity, we can calculate the efficiency. So, the step number one is always going to be identify or compute what is the standard. Now friends, how are we going to compute the standard? The standard has to be set based on past experiences. The standard has to be set based on something called as time and motion study. So the organization will carry out an exercise. They will, you know, do a lot of trials. They will do a lot of, uh, you know, iterations. They will observe. They will keep a record of how much time it is usually taking. They will maybe observe this for 100 units of output, maybe 1000 units of output, maybe for 10 days, 15 days, whatever they feel appropriate. And once they have the results, they will, you know, summarize these results, come at an average and determine what is the 
standard but friends while determining the standard we should be careful we should take it only for the like category of people and for the same job see i cannot set a standard for you know unskilled worker and try to apply this standard for a skilled labor so there have to be similarities that heterogeneous nature has to be there all right so first step is we set the standard then what is the second step when the employee is performing the activity we will measure the actual time that the employee has taken only if we have the actual time we can then compare it with the standard is it not all right and then lastly in the third step what we will do is we will do the computation of the efficiency ratio we will take the standard time divided by the actual time taken and multiply it with 100 in order to understand what is the efficiency percentage now friends you may ask me sir why is all this needed all of this is needed in order to identify who is an efficient worker who is a hard worker who you know needs to be incentivized who needs to be promoted who needs to be given appreciation and so on and so forth so identification is going to be very very important the second purpose why we need this employee rating or the efficiency rating uh, you know calculations is that it is going to help the management in creating a budget it is going to help the management and the organization in understanding what is the requirement of manpower let me give you a very simple example let's say in the coming month we are planning to produce 1000 units and i say that look as per the standard each unit should take about 8 hours of time that means how much total time we require of the labor in the coming period we require 1000 units into 8 hours which is 8000 hours so ideally we are expecting that if we work for 8000 hours if we arrange for labor force equivalent to 8000 hours we should get our output of 1000 units but then if i give you additional piece of information and i say look standard i'm expecting 8 hours but then the efficiency of the people who are working on this job is only 80% then will your number be same or will it change it will definitely change 8000 hours is as per the standard and when we talk about standard we are assuming what we are assuming 100% efficiency but here when we did the efficiency rating calculation we found out that the average efficiency of the employee is only 80% that means they are going to take time more than the standard now how much time they are going to take totally they are going to take 8000 hours divided by 80% efficiency which is going to be equal to 10000 hours so we need to make a budget we need to make a plan we need to arrange for sufficient amount of workforce which is going to be equivalent to 10000 hours of time so that is how the efficiency rating procedure is going to be helpful and it is going to be useful to the organization friends a very similar term to employee efficiency is the term employee productivity so here also what we are trying to compute or understand is whether we are taking you know time as per the standards or are we taking more time than the standard or less time than the standard so again when we talk about employee productivity though it is uh, you know more to do with the input and output ratio so how many units we have produced but then what precisely we are doing or what what we are actually doing is we are comparing the time that we should take as per the standards versus the actual time taken if the time taken actually is less than the standard then the productivity is high if the time taken is more than the standard then the productivity is low so that is called as employee productivity ratios now friends if we want to understand what is going to help in improving the employee efficiency or the employee productivity then what factors come to your mind so if we can have the right kind of people doing the right type of work then the employee productivity will be high so let's say if we deploy someone who is unskilled to a activity which requires high level of skill will that employee be able to do the job answer is no on the other hand if we are deploying someone who is highly skilled to a you know frivolous task to a task which does not require high level of expertise then we are wasting the talent so that means we should have the right kind of people doing the right kind of job right man in the right place 
then we can also increase the employee productivity or efficiency by hiring the people with the right skill sets. So the job description is very very important. If we can define the description of the job precisely, we will end up hiring people who are having the right skill sets in order to carry out that job. Once we have the people with the right skill sets, automatically the productivity and the efficiency will be high. Then what we can additionally do to improve their productivity? We can train the employees. We can, you know, give them continuous training in order to increase their skill sets, in order to improve their skill sets. With, you know, more and more training that we provide, their skills will improve, their productivity and efficiency will also improve. So these are certain steps that we can take in order to improve the efficiency or productivity of the employees.